Hey film friends, I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Welcome to the channel. The most chaotic, foul-mouthed, and violent buddy flick the MCU has ever attempted. Deadpool and Wolverine are finally sharing the screen again. What happens when you mix a regenerating wise-ass with an indestructible grump? This movie is so meta, I'm half expecting Ryan Reynolds to pop up in this review any second now. But he's probably off saving his wife from the PR nightmare that is her tone-deaf response to anything serious in It Ends With Us. Ooh. Anyway, let's get to what happens when you let five writers loose with an R rating and a bottomless supply of chimichangas. This is Deadpool and Wolverine. Life is a mystery. All right, guys, listen, we've got to start here. Where are we with the MCU? Sigh. I feel dangerously close to a long rant coming on. You've been warned. Let's get big picture for a second. I think we can all agree that things since the conclusion of the Infinity Saga, what the comic lovers would call Phase 4, have been not so great overall. We've had a bunch of standalone flicks like Shang-Chi, Black Widow, even some from solid, well-known directors. Look at it you, Sam Raimi. That in my opinion, all taken collectively were various shades of multiversal vanilla, concluding with predictable giant CGI battles. It seemed like we'd lost the stakes that Thanos and the Infinity Stones had given us. And Kevin Feige? Well, that man was just trying to simply flood the market with as much content as possible. Enter Disney Plus shows that started out decent, looking at you, WandaVision and Loki, and eventually became so god-awful we didn't know what was going on. My goodness, Secret Invasion. Add to all of this that the next big bad was going to be Kang the Conqueror, and then, yeah, I don't want to talk about him anymore. Game, set, match. There went our next big thing. So what happened? Disney scooped up Fox properties, cleared their slates, and decided they would only release one MCU film in the summer of 2024. Yeah, you heard that right. And here it is. Deadpool and Wolverine. So the question is, does this film save the dying MCU? Are we so back, baby? Well, the answer is maybe yes, and also kind of no. My guess is if you've seen and loved the other two Deadpool movies, you're going to be just fine here. This flick is a Deadpool movie on speed, man. Though not cocaine, because we're not allowed to talk about that on screen. You thought you had seen a lot of the R-rated cursing and jokes before, a lot of the fourth wall breaking meta commentary on the state of the world asides and general snideness of one Ryan Reynolds. Ooh, baby, this thing goes next level. Now we've got a picture making fun of other MCU movies for the first time. But not just that, now here's commentary on Marvel's tough times and the dire straits they've been in currently. You're joining up at a low point. You're required to see not only Logan and at least the first season of Loki and Deadpool 2. No, you need so much more insider info. Not just the movies themselves, but the Reddit boards and the stuff surrounding them. You need to know about the troubled multi-director production of Mahershala Ali's Blade remake, about Benefer, the original casting of Channing Tatum in a planned Gambit standalone flick, the merging of separate properties, and on and on and on. Otherwise, all of this stuff just goes right over your head. But fortunately for us, even if that does occur, the movie is always fun, never dull, and generally a great time. I mean, there's a way to look at this as just the ultimate boy's fantasy. Let's watch these two indestructible comic book dudes fight each other. Twice! And all the rich cameos also play like a love letter to movies past, just like No Way Home did. Beyond that, look. Hugh Jackman is just a legend. I mean, this is right in Reynolds' comic wheelhouse. But Jackman is simply cooking. He's emoting and giving this really measured performance. Despite the fact that he almost seemed to be in another far more serious movie than this one, I could not help but marvel at his chops. See what I did there? Marvel and... That's good, dude. Marvel chops. Well, yeah, this one is a great time, but I'd be lying if I said it does not have major structural issues. For starters, when you see five writers appear on screen, you're probably heading for danger. And there is just kind of incontinuity here. In fact, the plot a little nonsensical. What I'm saying is Deadpool and Wolverine really only works as a comedy to me. No emotional beats, no ultimate stakes, no sign of where the MCU is heading positively into the future. 
You could say, oh, it never wanted to be this. But I would argue that Jackman's performance and the fact that the plot tries to be this human story about heroism and saving loyal friends says otherwise. It's just Deadpool doesn't really do altruism. That's why we like him. And the world here is bigger than I think really works best for his character as well. What you need with Deadpool is a gritty, violent world that is small and uncomplicated, not another multiversal saga. I mean, sure, they make fun of and send up these stories pretty well in the void, but then they use it later on in the most pointless scene of the entire movie. So many Deadpools. So even when we're sarcastically sending up the recent MCU canon, we're still massively expanding the Deadpool character in ways I didn't love. Beyond this, there are too many exposition dumps across this convoluted plot. And Deadpool and Wolverine suffers from a two-villain problem that kind of robs both of them of their ultimate power. Although Emma Corrin's fingers through the brain move is super dope. Of course, the other side of the super meta layered jokes is that they require a hefty amount of pre-existing information. As it works itself out, this seems to be a movie way more interested in the past of 20th Century Fox than in the future of the MCU. And finally, dude, the void sucks visually. All of this shooting on the volume, it's the same problem that Quantumania has. You can have effective CGI inside of a sequence in the real world, but when you build the whole reality out of effects, ugh. It just doesn't work nearly as well. Let's film on location, guys. So, what do we conclude? In the end, Deadpool and Wolverine is a wild ride that delivers on the chaotic meta-humor and R-rated antics fans have come to expect. If you're a Deadpool fan, you're gonna have a blast with its rapid fire jokes and relentless energy. Hugh Jackman's return as Wolverine adds a layer of gravitas, even as the film only really lands as pure comedy. But despite the fun, the plot is messy, the emotional beats fall flat, and the movie often feels more like a tribute to the past than a step forward for the MCU. It's an entertaining romp, but don't expect it to carry the whole franchise forward on its shoulders. Life is a well, there you have it. The only thing left to discuss is our rating for this picture. FOF gives Deadpool and Wolverine three out of five stars. If you enjoyed this review, please let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Also, don't forget to visit FermanOnFilm.com for even more movie content. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Stay firm, my friends.